Good afternoon, everyone. I'm currently flat on the NASDAQ. We're coming in on Friday, so I decided to uh, just pump out a few videos. Um, in this video, I want to talk about adjusting the number of contracts you're putting on uh, in relationship to how volatile the market is. So this is, um, generally speaking, right, the market, I mean, this is not generally speaking, it's pretty much always going to be this way. The market in the overnight session is going to be less volatile than the market during the regular trading hour session. So if we go on the right here and we put on regular trading hours. We can see, right, this is obviously when the New York Stock Exchange is open and this is when the NASDAQ futures do the most movement. Um, unless it's like an economic release, in which case, guys, if you have like non-farm payroll, CPI, uh, you'll get a lot of your obviously a lot of your movement, your repricing right before the New York Stock Exchange opens. But if you see that your economic calendar on the right does not have a an economic release on the day, then you can rest assured that 95% of the time, the regular trading hours is going to have the most volatility for the day. Okay. Um, a lot of you are going to be trading uh, accounts that are not your own capital. So top step other companies or you you could actually just be trading your own capital right one of the ways that you can manage your risk is by adjusting the number of contracts you're using based on what session you're in and what the expected volatility is so for example we see today that our range from in the regular trading hour session has been 170 points or 1.08 percent guys that's a big big range so these candles um, are are pretty substantial right that's a big big range a 1.8 percent range and then yesterday we were two percent down on the day so yesterday was like a 300 point range guys if you're dealing with a market that is that is really volatile I mean it has a big um, some people would call it like average daily range you got to bring your contracts down because you have to manage your risk. So let's say that your normal lot size is three or your normal lot size is even four or five NASDAQs, depending on like what company you're trading with, what size account. If you're seeing that the NASDAQ just visually, right? Okay, well, the NASDAQ is working in a 170 point range. That's a lot. Uh, that's a lot, a lot. So you either go down to one contract or you even go over to the, the micro NASDAQ, the one tenth product, and you trade, uh, you know, let's say three micros, five micros, so like a half, a half lot, basically. You can just think of that as a half lot. You're not doing that because you're not confident in your ability to trade. It's nothing like that. It's just because, you, you know, you've got a limited amount of risk that you want to take on. And if you put on three or four a three or four lot size guys and this thing it could just retrace on you instantly 20 points you know very very quickly it's part of the reason why I don't trade the open and I don't trade economic releases is not because I'm not confident in my ability to trade just because um, it's not good risk management so however let's talk about now your lower volatility environments generally speaking again these things are general statements like sometimes the market for whatever reason, we'll have a really busy London session, right? A big London session. you got to be watching for that. So let's take resettlement up to, let's say, London. So 0200. So this is resettlement from Thursday to Friday up into 0200. And we see that the market moved a grand total of 57 points, a 57-point range. That's fairly big, by the way, for the Asian session from resettlement up into London. That's, um, that's a pretty decent-sized range. But here... For most of your accounts, you could be up at like a two lot, three lot, maybe even a four lot um, because the market is, is less volatile. Now let's take the London session from 0200 to 0530. See what our range was there on Friday. Our range there was 72 points. There you might want to be on a one lot, a two lot. Now, do you know this going in, how, how much range the session is going to give you? No, you don't, but generally speaking, right, it's going to kind of mirror whatever the prior session did. So if you had a really volatile Thursday regular trading hour session, you know, with a big range, you're probably going to get the, get a similar thing going into the next day's Asian session and London session. Guys, these are all general statements. I can't tell you exactly how much the market is going to move at any given time. I'm, I'm unable to do that. 
But I can tell you that generally speaking, you want to be on the least number of contracts during a normal regular trading hour session, uh, especially if, you know, you can you can see guys like if you can visually see you're at this point of the day you know you're working in a 170 point range yeah you should probably be down on like a low lot a low lot size for your for your risk management if you're in if you're in resettlement you know up into the London session from 1800 to 0200 and you don't have any reason to believe that the market is going to be particular volatile you can you can up the amount of contracts so the basic rule of thumb, guys, is that regular trading hours is going to be more volatile and you'll need to take on fewer contracts during the day session than you do the overnight session. The exception to that is if you're looking at your economic calendar and you have an economic release, which you really should be avoiding trading in the first place. Um, but you know at that point, right, the, the overnight trading, so the London session prior to an economic release is probably going to be pretty quiet, so you can up your contracts then, but as soon as that comes out, like the day after, you're probably going to have to lower the contracts. And then, guys, on TradingView, you can always just use this tool here and see what the range is you're working with. If you can see 87, 100, 200 point NASDAQ ranges, you know for a fact that during that session, okay, probably gotta, I got I to gotta bring the contracts down. Well, let's say that you're here on Tuesday and you're working from, you're putting in a work day from resettlement up into Asia, so from 1800 to 0200, and your grand total range there was 23 points. Okay, you can put up, you can put up the contracts there, guys. You can put up the contracts um, because the volatility was lower. But as soon as notice, guys, when you saw that the volatility picked up in London from 0200 to 0530. Look, now now we were working with a 42-point range, so you know you need to bear that in mind. Um, all right, guys, so I just wanted to basically tell you the, the other way that you could do this is you could use the average true range or ATR indicator. I don't use any indicators. I will never use an indicator, so I will not be using an ATR. I can visually see what, you know, is it the overnight session? Is it the day session? Do we have an economic release? I can take my measurement tool and see like how much the day appears to be moving is it a holiday is it not a holiday etc etc all these factors are going to factor into what my risk management is um, but if you need to use it I'll show you ATR average true range you can use this as well you, okay but I don't I will never use an indicator so I won't use that but you can if you want so anyways, guys, this is dynamic risk management, uh, scaling up and down contracts with uh, volatility. Bye-bye.